All right, shalom, shalom. Giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, All right, double honors for the, uh, to the apostles and the elders, the great millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to all you out know, there preaching this truth before the four corners of the earth. Of the earth. All right, with truth and sincerity in your hearts and for the love of the gospel. All right, it's the brother Shemariah. All right, coming to you again, giving another lesson. Got a fire in the flock to be how about Shemia Oshah. And this lesson is going to be about um, a Netflix documentary on uh, Esau, basically. All right, it's a, um, it's a uh, company by the name of DuPont, all right? And this company has made this substance called Teflon. And Teflon is the is the chemical put on the surface of cookware, all right, to make it non-stick. All right, but the the main component in Teflon and Teflon is um is a chemical called C8. All right, and in this chemical C8, it causes a lot of uh, birth defects. All right, it, it infects the fetus of women. All right, so if a woman gets pregnant, then uh, every every two out of eight women will have a birth defect. All right, and not only that, but it causes can it's, it's a, it has cancer causing agents and it has carcinogens. All right, there's just a lot of um. It's not meant to be ingested by humans, all right? It's not meant to be ingested. It's a chemical that's deadly. It has long-term health defects, all right? Um, and, and this is all in the patent. When they when they created, they uh, they got the chemical from uh, another company called 3M. And when 3M gave them this chemical, it was in the patent that um, one drop, if, if, if there is like a, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, right? It says uh, if there's an Olympic-sized swimming pool and it's one drop of C8, the chemical C8, then that whole, the whole swimming pool is contaminated, all right? And that's not can be, to be congested by humans, but they take the, uh, the, the chemical, the, the waste, and dump it into the rivers, all right? And the rivers, they spread, they spread down and get into other, um, into other um, cities and states, all right? Then they infect their water, and it cannot be cleansed by burning, or you can't be cleansed by a detoxing. You can't. It's indestructible. All right, it's just virtually indestructible. All right, because once the water is contaminated, the only thing you can do with the water is throw it away. But what do you do? What do you do when you contaminate a whole river? All right, oceans of it. You know, there's nothing that you can do. And they got away with this. They got away with this for years, from the '60s all the way to 2015, I believe, on the documentary it said. And this is all just Esau's trickery. They went against their word, all right, in the, in the, in the contract that they wrote. All right, um, they got a farmer to sell a piece of his land so they can um, use the rivers to dump C8 into it. Then they said in the contract they would not dump any waste, any biohazard, biohazardous waste in the river, and they did anyway. All right, and the patent is said that C8 is not to be ingested by humans, but they still contaminated the water and put the chemical in the Teflor. You know, and then put the Teflon on the surface of cookware. All right, baking pans and fry pans and pots and skillets. All right, this is all Esau's trickery. And then they got away with it because they had the money to pay off or bribe the people that were in their way. All right, they got away with it, uh, infecting, infecting millions, infecting everybody. All right, and in the documentary, it said how um, above the plant when they first started to experiment with the, with the chemical C8 that they heard thumping sounds on the ceiling and it was the sounds of birds falling out of the air because they were flying over the smoke of the plant. That's how potent this chemical is. They still did it anyway. Why did they do it? Because of profit. All right, and that's why I wanted to get into this lesson today. All right, because if, if Esau would do anything, if it's in his profit, all right, because this world has been given to him and this is why that the earth is in the state that it's in. This is just one of the reasons why. All right, because they're 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 not meant they're not fit to rule. All right, they're not fit to, to, to rule a society. And this is just me filtering it out through the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha. All right, which the name the true name of the living power is Yahweh, and his son is Yahweh Shai, which the word ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right. Now, I'm going to get some scriptures to back that up. Everything that I've been saying, I'm going to get some scriptures to back up that Esau is not fit to rule. He's a liar. He goes against his word. All right. And I'm not going to make this too long. I'm just going to get a couple of scriptures just to, you know, hit the nail on the head, so to speak. All right. This is the book of uh, Sirach. All 
All right, Ciroc 13. Rock 13 and 3. The rich man hath done wrong, and yet he threateneth withal. The poor is wrong, and he must and he must entreat also. Alright? So the rich man have done wrong. And, and, he, and then and then he does wrong to the poor. Alright, for what? For his profit, for his gain. Verse 4. If thou be for his profit, he will use thee. But if thou have nothing, he will forsake thee. Alright? So he will he will use thee. If you be for his gain, all right, he he's he's measured upon his riches. His life is measured upon his riches, and the more riches that you have, he's going to use you to get those riches by any means. He's going to kill you, all right. He's going to commit genocide, all right. By any means necessary, he will he will do anything he can to get those riches. It says, "For thou have, if thou has any, if thou have anything, he will live with thee." Yeah, he will make thee bear and will not be sorry for it. See, he will make thee bear. He's going to strip you of your luxuries, of what you got, and make thee bear. All right? If he have need of thee, he will deceive thee and smile upon thee and put thee in hope. He will speak thee fair and say, What wantest thou? And he will shame thee by his meats until he have drawn thee, until he have drawn thee dry twice or thrice at the last he will laugh thee to scorn afterward see if he have need of you it says he will he will shame thee by his meats until he have drawn thee out twice and thrice so he's going to get you for what you got until you until he wring you out dry like a towel how you wring out a towel he's going to do that to you but two times and three times after you're already dry that's why i say he's going to leave you out to bear all right, he's going to strip you bare. It says, and at the least, he will laugh thee to scorn afterward. So he's going to laugh at you, make fun of you. All right, talk about you. It says, when he see thee, when he see thee, he will forsake thee and shake his head at thee. He's going he's gonna to neglect thee after you brought him in. All right, after you entreated him and brought him into your home or whatever, or you took care of him, you looked after him. He's going to take what you got and laugh you to score and shake his head like he didn't do any wrong. It said he will not be sorry. Verse 5 said he will not be sorry for it. Because he's a devil. All right. It says, beware that thou be not deceived and brought down into the into, uh, into jolly. Jollity. It says, if thou be invited of a mighty man, withdraw thyself and so much more will he invite thee. All right, uh, that's all. That's why I want. That's all I wanted to get in that scripture. Actually, the point was at six, six and seven. All right, but it's more because this this devil. You have to beware of him. All right. Uh, I actually want to get the previous chapter, verse eight. Uh, Sirach twelve and seven. Give unto the good and help not the sinner. A friend cannot be known in prosperity, and the enemy cannot be hid in adversity. So Esau is going to show himself when he's in adversity with you. In the prosperity of a man, enemies will grieve, will be grieved. In the adversity, even a friend will, will depart. See, that's Esau Edom. Never trust thine enemy, like as iron rusteth, so is his, so is his wickedness. And it's not just focused on Esau Edom. It's anybody that sins, man. Any sinner. That that love, uh, that love their evil ways, all right, will do these things. And Esau is being the the worst of them all. Okay. Now, uh, like I said, man, he uh, he never kept his word. He's he's all for his profit. All right, he's gonna do anything anything he has to do. He's gonna do to make those dollars, man. He's gonna do to make his uh, make him rich, make him wealthy. Because his power is his wealth. His his power lies in his wealthiness. That's how that's how Esau, that's how Esau Edom gets his power, by his uh, by his wealth, you know. Uh, 
Give me one moment. There it is. This is Job. Is that 21? Book of Job, chapter 21, verse 7. It says, Wherefore, Job 21 and 7, Wherefore do the wicked live, but become old, yet, and are mighty in power? Their seed is established in their sight. Actually, before I get that, I'm going to jump to the Psalms, because the scriptures say, uh, Wicked man trusts in his riches, man. I think it's 52 and 1. Psalms 52 and 1. Why boast of thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The, good, the goodliness of Yahweh endures continually. Thine tongue deceiveth mischief like a sharp razor working deceitfully. That means he loves lying. All right. It says, Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than speaking righteousness. So instead of saying, okay, this is a harmful chemical in the documentary, that is, instead of saying this is a, car, this is a harmful chemical that uh, it threatens the lives of civilians and others, and we can't use this. We have to use something better. They won't say that. Because why? That's going to be in the way of their prophet. You know? They love lies more than goodliness. All right? It says, Yeah, it says, Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Yahweh shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thine dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. So this is this is a future prophecy, man. After the Lord comes back and retakes the kingdom of his earth. All right, after he retakes this world, the era that we live in, he's going to what? He's going to likewise destroy thee forever. Yahweh Barashim Yahweh is going to do this. Destroy thee forever. He shall take away, take thee away and pluck thee out of the dwelling place. And root thee out of the land of the living. So you're not going to be in the land of the living anymore. All right, it says, the righteousness also. The righteous also shall see and, and, and fear and shall laugh at him. See, we the tables are going to turn. How it just said in uh, the book of Sirach that he's going to laugh at you and shake the head. Well, we're going to laugh at you and shake our head. All right. It says, this is the man that made Yahweh his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches. So, okay, this is the man that made that made not Yahweh his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in, the, in his wickedness. See, that's the point. He strengthened himself in his richness, his riches. All right. And this is how this is how the Lord, this is how Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh created you to be. He created you to be a devil that, that hate speaking righteousness and hate uh, and hate telling the truth, man, and strengthen yourself in riches more than strengthen yourself in the Lord. That's why I have to get this before I got the Job, because it goes into it more in depth. It says, Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yeah, and are mighty in power? Their seed is established in their sight with them and their offspring before their eyes. See? See, they don't they don't under the curses the same as Jake. Their seed is established in their sight and their offspring before their eyes. You know, they, they see they get to see their children grow up. They're full of they're full of years and days where the Jake the the um the Israelites is under the curses, we don't get to see our children grow up, man. Not in this society, not everyone. All right. Not even the majority of Israelites, man. The majority of Israelites are taken away from their family. All right. Because we're under the curses. All right, so it's their seed is established in their sight with them and their offspring before their eyes their houses are safe from fear 
Neither is the rod of Yahweh upon them. See, their houses are safe from fear. They don't have the fear of the Lord on them. All right. And they don't fear anything because this is their kingdom. You know, they Esau, Esau Edom, they don't have the fear of the Lord on them. So their house is far, is far from fear. All right. So they do whatever the hell they please. And they're, they, they're far from fear as in they're not scared of anything. Their pride and arrogance doesn't let them be scared of anything. All right, that's why they don't fear the Lord. Esau uh, had a house totally unlocked doors, all right, in their neighborhood. Doors totally unlocked and not scared of anything that happened to them because they're sitting pretty right now. That's why it says, neither is the rod of Yahweh upon them. The Lord don't correct them. He's going to correct them ultimately, all right, with the ultimate destruction, but he doesn't correct them like he doesn't chastise them, all right, because they're not a son of his. They're bastards, all right? It says they're bull. Gender and faileth not, their cow, their cow cleaveth, and and casteth her, and casteth not her calf. See, their bull gendereth. That means it, it it goes on in generation to generation. And his bulls are very uh, fruitful. All right. It says, if if and faileth not, their calf cleaveth. So it cleaveth to the mother. It says, and casteth not her calf. See, that means that their 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 calf is is they're rich basically. Their cattle is growing. So I mean they're getting money. It says they they take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of an organ. So they're rejoicing. Alright, they're dancing. Now they're far from being chastised. It says they spend their days in wealth and in the moment go down to the grave. Therefore they say unto Yahweh, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thine ways. See? So why they got why they they basically say, Why we gotta serve you? We all good over here. See our bull gender, our bulls are giving birth. All right, the 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 calf, the, the calf is cleaving to the mother. So that means they're growing, they they they're constantly increasing. So why are we? Why should we serve the Lord? You know, that's how they think. That because they they what they they love speaking lies. They are they are far from righteousness. It says, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thine ways. It says, what is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Lo, their good is not in their hand, and counsel of the wicked is far from me. See, their good is not in their hand, but it's in the Lord's. But the Lord gave it unto them, and they're proud, arrogant people. So they're, through their pride, they're going to say, Oh, what do we need the Lord for? We've been good ever since. Without, we, we haven't been praying to him, and we've still been getting this, this, this lovely, um, lovely luxuries, you know? It says, how oft the candle of the wicked is put out, and how oft cometh their destruction upon them. Yahweh distributes the sorrows in his anger. See? So how often, uh, um, actually, if you, go back a, if you go back a chapter, it says what, uh, Job 20 and 4, Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon the earth? That the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment. See? It says, Though his excellent mount up to the heavens and his head reacheth the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? See? That's that's being plucked out of the land of the living. Alright, that's getting plucked out of the land of the living. Alright? It says, He shall perish forever like his own dung, that they that they would see where they which have seen him shall say where is he he shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found yeah he shall be chased away as a vision of the night the eye with the eye also which saw him shall shall see him no more neither shall his place any more withhold him see so that's him being plucked out of the land of the living. And that's, this, that's, that's part of his punishment that he has for being arrogant in the face of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. And this, this, this documentary that I pulled up, it's nothing but the arrogancy of Esau Edom. All right. It's nothing but the arrogancy of Esau Edom, man. How he lies. He goes against his own word. All right. He has, he has broken the treaty. You know, his, his patents and his contracts... He's not bound to him because of his riches. He can just pay off who he, who he wants to, and then he's going to get away with it. All right, but he's not going to escape the punishment of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, and that's just that's that's a given, you know. And uh, that's all I had.
I really recommend that brothers watch this. Yeah, it's really good. It's a really good documentary, and it tells you how East Hall Edom has polluted the whole earth. All right. Now, uh, I hope to help. I hit the nail on the head. And, uh, Paul Lloyd, how about Shem Yahweh Shah? By Shem Yahweh Shah. But I still want to follow me to this video. Feed the, uh, feed the lambs of how about Shem Yahweh Shah. The water, uh, the water for y'all for listening. Until next time, I'll say Shalom.